from the back of a back lot of a movie studio in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. <laughs> As you know. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. I down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. All you do here is call us at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. By the way, if you're calling from another country, streaming the show over the Internet, there's even a special international line just for you. The country code. You ready to write this down? I'll wait. I got a pen. There it is. I right. other countries they they move slower than we do. Come on, the country code is one. The area code is three two three, and the number is five two zero sixty two eleven. That's one three two three five two zero six two one one. Okay. Here we go with your calls on the Tom Likas show on this Friday. It's Edward. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Edward. How you doing? How you doing? Good, good. Love the show, man. Thank you. I just had a comment to make earlier about the uneducated Laker fans or just L.A. fans in general. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't. No offense to you or any other L.A. fan. You know, we got the Lakers, great squad, doing great things this year, but... Man, for some reason, we're a bunch of hypocritical bandwagons, man. If we're doing bad, we're not supporting the team. If we're doing good, everyone's yelling, Kobe dog, Kobe dog. And we're uneducated, man. We don't know anything about the game. All we know is the good good players, players that put up some decent numbers. But when the team's down, no so people know the it. So people know the game when the Lakers are winning, and they don't know the game when the Lakers are losing? Exactly. Exactly. That doesn't make any sense. How could you know the game one year and then the next year the Lakers lose and you forgot everything you knew? I don't know. That's the thing. Hot, hot. Hey, don't base it on these stupid radio stations with microscopic audiences that have the same 15 people calling over and over. That tells you nothing about what the fans know. Yeah, but I'm speaking to my fans, but even the, my friends, they're all, they're all Laker lovers, but they know nothing about Lakers before Kobe. You know what I mean? I'm not a true fan. And, I, dude, we don't even deserve a football team in L.A. Thank well, God. Well, wait, 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 wait. Why do, what do you mean we don't deserve a football team? Why not? We got uneducated fans. You know, we, we're not loyal to the team. Look at uh, the- put, wait, let me, let me tell you something about being loyal to the team. You know who the biggest morons are? The people who are loyal to the Chicago Cubs. Chicago is supposed to be this great sports city. Why would anyone continue to go see or root for the Chicago Cubs? They have not won a World Series in over a century. Yeah, but that's your team. That's your team, dude. No, but they, but but the point is, the the management of the team knows they never have to win. That the morons will continue paying higher and higher prices to see the team play, and they don't ever have to win. Uh, they're idiots, is what they are. Yeah, exactly. They're idiots for for. They're not, idiots for, for not, supporting yeah. a losing team. Uh, but, I mean, that's the management's fault. As a fan, well, uh, but then then you have to teach the team a lesson. 
I tell you what, if I lived in Chicago, I would not. I would not be a Cubs fan. I wouldn't. Really? Really? White Sox? White Sox have produced a couple of uh, World Series teams since 1959. Right, right. Cubs a, have not. I would take a pay cut, man. I would, I would, if you can't win the next 50 years, the next 10 years, the players got to put in some money, man. But they won't. Wrigley Field, they'll continue, unless they're calling it some other uh, name by uh, 10 years from now, uh, they'll just continue hiking the prices of tickets, hiking the prices of, of bratwurst, hiking the prices of souvenirs, and the morons in Chicago will keep going. Wow. I like the Clippers, though, right? I mean, Elgin Baylor's doing a horrible uh, job. Anybody who's got a Clipper season ticket is an idiot. <laughs> You're an idiot. Yeah, that's okay. true. But the point is, I'd rather uh, I'd rather look at how many empty seats there are at Clipper games. Do you think people should support the Clippers even when they stink? I honestly do. I mean, I support the Clippers. I I mean, the, no can way. I tell I you something? Do you, do you know, Donald Sterling would find a way to make that club win if, if 4,000 people showed up at Staples Center inst instead of twelve or 14 or 16,000. True. The reason they don't win is because he makes more money by losing than winning. It's like that 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 movie, The Producers. You know, you can you make more money with a flop than a hit. So why bother playing for the Clippers? Well, that's my point. Why spend ten cents to see the Clippers? I wouldn't. Yeah, I guess that's why the tickets are so cheap. That's why tickets are so cheap. I mean, but I think the fans are smart. The fact that people are not showing up for Clippers games shows you. How smart the L.A. fans are. Yeah, but then they got to go to the Laker games. So what? At least you're seeing a quality product. Yeah, at a high price. Who cares? It's a quality product. You want to see one of the best teams in the league? you got to pay. Just this year. That's the point I'm trying to make is this year, finally, after four years, Gasol, Bynum, you know, letting go Shaq. Hey, baby pal, Ford. let me tell you something. What are there, 30 teams, 32 teams in the NBA? It's some outrageous number. It's 30 teams. There's 30 teams in the NBA. How, how many times are you going to go to the playoffs or, or, or win a championship? The Lakers, in, in view of that, have been remarkable. Yeah, but if you're, if you're including I mean, I, you know, this shows how unrealistic you are. You think the Lakers should be the champions every year, and if they're not, they stink. I don't know. I, I know they don't stink, but... I mean, how would you like to have the Atlanta Hawks? Now, this year the Atlanta Hawks were a little better, but how would you like to have that team since 1965 or whenever they moved to Atlanta from St. Louis? They have stunk for 40 years. Yeah, but they've had great players come through, Dominique. So and... what? They have stunk. True, but I mean... How about the, the New York Knickerbockers? Oh, that's a great team, man. Come on. Knickerbuckers? Well, oh, really? Yeah, yeah name yeah. the last championship they won. What year was that? Oh, wow, that was a while ago. What it's, What uh, year was it? I have no clue, but that was a while ago. Yeah, within, within a five-year span, what year was it? Well, I, I have no idea, man. That's I mean, right. That's my point. But here you are criticizing the Lakers if they don't win a championship every year and then calling the Knicks a great team. Nick's not now, but, I mean, just give him some time. The I'm Knicks sure. have stunk for most of the last 30 years. I don't like the Lakers, but I don't know. I guess you're right, but I just, I just, I don't like the Lakers, man. Fine. But you don't, don't like the Lakers them. for no good reason. The fans, I just feel like they're uneducated. I don't know anything about basketball. It's just number 20. Oh, really? Which fans know about basketball? The morons who spend $500 a ticket to watch the Knicks? Are they smarter? Oh, but I'm just saying, if you're going to start out supporting a team... The idiots who bought a corporate suite for the Atlanta Hawks 20 years ago, are they smarter than Laker fans? Well, depends. I mean... Depends on they, what? They've been there from day one. So what? Winning doesn't matter. It's about the team. It's oh, just... it doesn't... Well, you're all over the road. First, you criticize the Lakers for not being champions every year. Then you say winning isn't everything. Which is it? What I'm trying to get at is that the reason I'm criticizing for not being champions is not because they're not champions. It's because the fact that the fans aren't there when they're not champions, and then they're there when they're champions. The Lake, honestly. by the way, the Lakers were still pretty close to sold out when when they were tanking. 
Yeah, by Cameron Diaz and Justin Timberlake and all the Oh, Hispanics. please, please. Oh, and all the Hispanics. Here we go. Now we're getting down to the brass sacks. Yeah, that's what it is, though. I mean, that's true. And Cameron Diaz and Justin Timberlake and all the Hispanics. Is Justin Timberlake <laughs> a Hispanic, too? I'm sorry? Justin Timberlake is Hispanic, too? No, I was talking about Hispanics, but I was talking about the celebrities and their friends and their friends. Pal, that's what you see on TV. On TV, you can see about 500 seats. They're not going to show the place you the holds... sections of the Hispanics. And they the don't show you the nosebleed sections of any arena. The game is on the floor. It's not up at the 300 level. Right, right, right. I'm saying the, the, the reason for fans not attending or attending... You know what I mean? The fans, as I said to you, when the Lakers didn't even make the playoffs, they were still pretty close to sold out. Really? Right? I mean, I guess. I don't really what do you mean you guess? Team. Have you ever watched a Laker game and seen 8,000 people show up like the Clippers have had? Yeah, I have. No, yeah? no you're right. When? But, I mean, before, before, because they come and see Kobe play. But back in the So United what? Play. I don't care what the reason is. Yeah, but they're not... Uh, Playoff contending team. They're not. They're not. They were the first of the Western Conference, and they're not a playoff contending team. Oh, not, not this year. This year they are. They're the championship quality this year. Mm. I don't like the whole comparison of, of, of Kobe to MJ either, man. I mean, MJ. Oh, is, my God almighty. Went to Chicago. I love Chicago. I think Jordan is the greatest player ever to step foot on the basketball court. So what? Uh, and I think our fans need to understand that Jordan will and has always been greater than Kobe. Yeah, I, I, I've, had, a, I've had enough. I've had enough. You know what? I've had, now you start, you know what? You're making yourself laugh now because you're just a complete moron. Can you take me out of Kobe style, though? No. <laughs> Idiot. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Manual on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I just was calling to give you props. I'm a new listener. And uh, basically, I'm 33. I'm still single, living the Vida Loca. Uh, a lot of my friends, they ask me when I'm going to get married and have kids. And I ask them why. Why do I have to do it so quick? Why, what's up to them, you know? Yeah. And they said I'm selfish with myself. And not, not sharing, you know, life. And I tell them I don't like that. And uh, recently, one of my good friends has started dating a, a girl with kids. And I haven't been able to convince him not to do it, you know, because he's going to end up the wrong way. But, you know, I really like your show and keep up the good good work that you're doing out here, you know. Manuel, go, I'm, I'm go proud Lakers. of you. Go, go, Lakers. go Lakers is right. <laughs> Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Stop. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like you. Definitely don't like you. It's the Tom Likas Show. Yeah. Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Why is he doing that weird voice? It's very uncomfortable. I'm calling from Chicago. I can feel the building starting to shake. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. James on the top like is your wide open telephone. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay, James. This is James Faisal. I'm down here in uh, San Clemente. I'm, I'm belly up at the OC Tavern, ready to suck down a couple beers and. I was listening to that last caller, and uh, it kind of irked me that uh, you didn't agree with the fact that uh, he was calling out Laker fans as kind of fair weather. And I, I don't have a problem with people being fair weather fans. If the product stinks, people should stop paying high prices to see it. I don't. I don't disagree with that. However, when you said that Cubs fans are idiots, they are idiots. Uh, okay, I'm not going to agree or disagree with that. But the first thing that comes to my mind is Red Sox fans. What do you have to say about them as idiots or not idiots? The guys that have hung in there for the last 70-plus years, and now they're... Well, doing... I, I think the vast majority of them were idiots. And, in fact, until the current ownership came in there, uh, the, the Red Sox had no intention of ever winning. 
There were no curses involved. Uh, the ownership of the team decided at some point at a cocktail party or a dinner at a mansion somewhere, hey, it costs too much to win. Okay, I'm, w I'm with you on that. but, but And I, so I guess, they, they know they had a nice ballpark that people like. By the way, it's a hole. It looks great on TV, but I lived in Boston for a year, and I went to Fenway Park, and it's it's a living, breathing toilet bowl. And it, it in no way compares to Wrigley Field. <laughs> No, I, I've, been, I've been to both, Tom. But I have to, I have to say that they fill their seats year in, year out. They're With morons. Good or bad. No, good but or bad. The, fact, the true fans, being a true fan many times means you're an idiot. You're going to call them morons this year when they win the World Series? Again, if, if people are going to see a team that, that's in first place and has a real shot at the title every year, those are not idiots. The idiots are the people who go to Cubs games and think the Cubs will ever win anything. They won't. All right, well, hey, that's fair. Listen, I'm not going to argue but I, because I can't win. And if the Red Sox hadn't been sold by the Yawkey Fest, Tom Yawkey hadn't died and the, the estate hadn't sold the team uh, to people who know something about finance and numbers like that John Henry does, uh, they'd still be losing. That's fair. I mean, the, the, my, my point is, though, that the, the, the fans have been there. Now, now, now they're putting the bat on the ball. They're winning games. They're winning championships. And the fans are obviously still going to be there. Uh, you want to talk about good? They're going to pay more. <laughs> hey, listen, Tom. I I'm going to let you go because my cold beer just showed up. But listen, you got a great product. I listen to you every day. Thank you, Jay. Don't always don't always agree with you, but uh, you you, know, you talk about filling the seats, man. You got a lot of listeners out here. We put points on the board every day, and the price is right. That's right. That's right. I'm in. Take care, Tom. Have a good weekend. <laughs> Thank you, James. Clearly, New England checking in there. But unlike New York, you notice he didn't tell you where he was from. It kind of showed, but at least he didn't tell you. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's Greg on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? I'm, How you doing today? I'm doing okay. Doing a radio show. Awesome, awesome. Hey, uh, Father, uh, I normally agree with you on a lot of things, but I I, I can't agree with you on uh, giving college advice for someone that didn't graduate college. What who would know that? better the benefits of going to college than somebody who didn't have the benefits? Right, but you are you make fun of everybody that tries to go to college. and you. No, I don't to make college. fun of people who try to go to college. I make fun of people who don't try to go to college. No, there was a couple guys that called and said they were going to either tech schools or a community tech college. Tech schools are not colleges. And you were calling them losers. Tech schools are not colleges. It's in a... It's you can still get a degree from it. Yeah, it, it, it. What does it mean? It's not a college degree or a university degree. That's like I give a diploma for passing like it's 101. I mean, so what? I mean, no. <laughs> put that on your resume. No, you can't put that on your resume. Well, you can't technical. put the fact that you went to a, a technical school or a trade school and you got a quote-unquote degree. It, it is not a college degree. It's not a university degree. It's like passing like it's 101. So what? I personally went to the right, and and I got a degree that I could use. Come on, that that is not a degree. A degree comes from an accredited university. Is that an accredited university? Yes, yes it is. The right is also a. It's a university. The right is a university. Yes. It's, it's a not, university. It's not a it's not a four-year institution university. Well, that's that, that's what a university is. Okay, it's either a community college. Uh, or it's a university. After that, it's something else altogether. Yeah, but this is... This that's is like people get a degree for going to beautician school. What does that mean? Well, that's different. That's, that's no, it's not. It's just another trade school. Well, it's a starting point for a lot of students. It, 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 but it's not a university. It's not a college. It's not. And and let, let, let's talk about the uh, tuition. I mean, geez, everyone's chasing wealth these days, and, and everyone, the first thing they do is put themselves in debt. With a twenty, thirty thousand dollar loan. Well, then that's a good incentive to finish your education and not drop out. Well, not if it's not if it's going to put you that far in the hole. Well, I, uh, you know, pe I tell you what, people who are on the ball will pay that off. My personal opinion is, if your parents can afford to put you through school, or you can save the money to put yourself through school, then you got a great start. But I, I wouldn't recommend people who go to trade schools don't go to college. Of course, they do. Rarely. Uh, I I personally believe that that's I mean I just uh, I didn't understand why you were making fun of people that that were trying to go to school. I didn't I don't make fun of people who try to go to school. I'm making fun of people who do not go to college. Well, 
college. That's what I meant, school, college. Uh, technical schools, trade schools are not colleges. Yeah, and one one other thing, Tom, I got to... And you saying they are doesn't make it so. Well, I, I speak from personal experience. I, I've that doesn't... Oh, are, are you an educator? Are you an expert in this field? Oh, absolutely not, but I... It's not a college. The fact that you went to it doesn't make it a college, and the fact that you know what it's like to go to trade school doesn't make it a college either. But you still got the same loans to pay. It doesn't. It still doesn't make it a college. I could buy a car and have a loan, and I have to pay it off. So what? It doesn't make a car a college either. What? No. I just bought a house up in Santa Barbara. Is that a college? No. I still owe uh, a million dollars on the house. Do I, is that a college? I got a loan I got to pay off. You have to show up to college. I show up at my house. I, I show up. I chlorinate the pool. I arrange the uh, the chase lounges around the pool. I, uh, I I make sure that the gardener is paid. Is is that a university? Oh, you're missing my point, though, Tom. I mean, a school is school, whether it's a tech school, whether no, it's not. It's not. There are people who go to 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 the to the ground leagues to learn how to do uh, improvisational comedy. Uh, there are people who go uh, and uh, learn about baseball card trading. Uh, I mean, the, the, the fact is that because you sit in a circle and talk to other people doesn't make it an accredited university. <laughs> Except for the school I went to actually says they're an accredited university. No, no, they don't say that. They say they're accredited, but they uh, they don't say they're a university. Well, they're not Rye, a university. Rye is a university. <laughs> Uh, oh, and my second question for you, Tom. I'm going to be checking this on the Internet myself Okay. because because you're full of it. Oh, no, I'm not. I got a second question for you, though, Tom. If you said back in your days when you were trying to put yourself through school and you went broke, uh, why would you think it would be any different for students trying to put themselves through school today? Why wouldn't they go broke? The what? Students trying to put themselves through school, wouldn't they be broke? Wouldn't they go broke the same way you did back in when you were trying to go to school? Uh, uh, again, and, and I've said this many times, uh, th th you didn't have the ability to borrow as much money as you can today. You didn't have the ability to get as many scholarships and, and Pell Grants and what have you as you have today. Community colleges were not as good as they are today. Uh, people's parents also generally pitch in and help them out a little bit, which mine did not. Right, right. I heard that. If story. I could have gone, I would have gone. And and I want to tell you that because I didn't go to college, I had to work ten times harder than anybody else to succeed. And I was near bankruptcy three times. Now, if I fell off the, the roof of a building and I survived, I would not recommend that other people go to the top of the building and jump off. Oh, absolutely. So when you did get your money, why didn't you finish school? Because I'm busy making all this money now. I can, oh. bu I can buy a university. And that's good. That's good. I'm happy for you. Then I could give myself a degree. So why went every? Hey, when did the model went from pursuing your dreams to getting an education? I remember back in the day, everyone used to say, "Follow your dreams, whatever your dreams were." Now it's all about going to get a school, go to school, get an education. When did that change? I I, I really don't think it ever changed. I think both uh, comments are still being made. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM 1-800-5800-866 What's at the base of all of this, you know, uh, banging chicks? It's like, it's kind of a biological urge. What's at the base of eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day? <laughs> okay, all right. It's the Tom Likas Show. You're me. The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Jose on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hey, how you doing, Tom? How you doing? I'm doing all right. So, yeah, um, I was wondering, you know, I was thinking about getting into an investment, buying a property, but I was trying to do it with two of my female friends. Oh. First of all, there's no such thing as a female friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, the reason I'm doing it with them is because um, my credit is not the best. If, if your credit is not the best, you should not be buying a house. Exactly. I'm not buying it. You shouldn't be buying a house with others. 
I, uh, I, you know, instead of uh, going into an apartment and renting, I can basically pay the same amount that I would be paying in renting. But, you but know, you're not paying the same amount because a house has expenses that you aren't aware of because you've never owned a house. No, actually, I live in a house right now, and I have to pay for all those expenses. Really? Pay so you pay you pay years. homeowners insurance? Uh, yes. You pay you pay earthquake insurance. Um, actually, I don't have earthquake. You pay insurance. property taxes. Exactly. Mm hmm. Um, earthquake insurance is not uh, covered with my. Uh, agency. Why is your credit so lousy? Besides the fact that you were a deadbeat. Um. Well, when I was in earlier, when I was in uh in the Marines, I took out a thousand dollar loan and I got out and I never paid for it. Why did you? I, wait, wait, wait. Why did you do that? Um, my car was, uh, basically the transmission uh, blew out and I had to take a loan out for it. Why were you living so close to the edge? Why didn't you have some savings? Uh, so a rainy day fund, why not? I just, uh, they don't pay enough in the Marines, so it was just, you know. And, and, and what kind of car was it that you owned? Um, actually it was a, uh, Mitsubishi, uh, Spider Eclipse. Mm -hmm. I, it was a, it was a gift. It was a gift. Yes. And so, um, you got into the Marines and didn't have any money and didn't pay enough. Exactly. Okay. So, so does everybody, does every, so you're thing. saying that everybody in the military has bad credit? No, no, no. Well, why did no, you I have bad it. credit? Because after I got out, I didn't pay for it. I, it was, uh. Yeah, but I why, why I would imagine if the pay is as bad as you say, everybody's doing the same thing you're doing, not paying no, their no. bills. Most of the people do, did not have expenses like cars or whatever. They don't have rent over there. They, you know, they just basically either uh, save up their money or blow it on the weekend. Oh, uh, and what, what what category were you in? I was in the category of uh, blowing it on the weekend. Well, see, that's the reason you had these yeah. problems. It is not because was, you're in the not because you're in the Marines. Don't blame it on being in the military. It's because you were irresponsible. Yes, and, and I was a deadbeat. Are you, uh, exactly. Well, you weren't that much younger than you are now. Oh, it was. This is about six years ago. Ooh, yeah, I mean, it's wow, six years, whole seventy-two months ago. Wow. Yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> it doesn't seem like much, but it is a good chunk of my life already. Mm. Yeah. So, um, I was thinking of getting into this, uh, into this, buying a house with my friends. I I don't think it's a good idea. Really? Really, I don't. Really, I don't. I think you should first get your credit together. Oh, uh, my credit is getting better. Um, no, I it, it, needs, on it. it needs to be stellar. Hey, right now, it's at like a 620, maybe a little bit higher. It's not, it's not right. good. good and and so this, what is the structure of this proposed deal to buy this house? Um, basically, we're all putting in a down payment. And we would all be paying equal amount of uh, of more monthly mortgage. Right. And uh, whose name would be on the deed? Uh, one of my uh, my friends, basically, because they got better credit than oh, I do. Well, that has they, nothing uh, to do with whose name. Wait, wait, wait. Stop. That has nothing to do with whose name is on the deed. Okay. Oh, oh, on title, it would be all three of us. What, what do you think the deed is? Um, the the ownership of the house. Well, I asked you if all if your name was going to be on the deed. You said no. No, no, no. I, I thought you meant on the loan. On the loan. Yeah, on the loan I won't be. Right. But on the deed I will be. Right. And um, then who is going to be uh, responsible for the property taxes? Well, we're going to end up compounding it monthly into the uh, mortgage, so we're definitely going to be paying it on a monthly basis. Equally. And if we exactly. So you're paying everything equally. Exactly. And how much is it going to cost you? Have you uh, have you put it down on paper and figured out all of the expenses, including yeah, I, repairs and everything else? On repairs, the house is um, not not beat up. It's not beat up at all. That has nothing uh, to do with anything. I just bought a three million dollar house. The toilet leaked. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, you have to figure in the cost of repairing things that go bad. Um, I'm pretty sure that we would all. Be, you know, what do you mean? You're pretty sure. You know, like all of us would take in. Yeah, but um, you're not you're being pretty expense. sure. It is not a guarantee. Well, I mean, if they don't want to pay, then I mean, we're going to have a leaky toilet for a long time. Right. You know? I mean, they 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 have to come up with the same amount that I do. Right. Who's paying the utilities? 
the utilities is all broken up into three. We basically add up all the utilities and split it down the middle. What happens if one person decides they don't feel like paying or they don't have enough money? Or they need to put then, it into their transmission because their transmission blew out in their car. What happens then? And then either we end up going bad on the note or somebody has to help out the other person. So do you realize what that would do to your credit? Yes, it would ruin it. It would right. ruin it. Right. And uh, you and you say you live in a house now and you pay all the expenses. Whose house is it that you're living in and paying all the expenses? Well, I'm not paying all the expenses. I charge everybody equally. So, I mean, it comes out of my checking account, but... But we end up, they, they, everybody pays me right now. And right. it's not my house. We basically are kind of like, I thought I was going to own it, but um, the houses went so low. I was going to refinance, put everything in my name. Didn't work out that way. And so, uh, let me uh, ask you another question. What happens if one of your good friends decides that uh, this is costing too much or it's too much work or too much hassle? Well, she has a boyfriend and she wants to move out and be with him or she wants the boyfriend to move in or she wants to get married and move somebody in. What happens then? We have decided that if anything like that happens, that either the two remaining people or the one remaining person would actually buy the other person out. And where and are you going to get that kind of money? Uh, I believe we can do a refinance after afterwards. You know, do you know how hard it is right now to get financing to buy any property, uh, even hard. even with good credit. Do you know that I have uh, an eight hundred plus FICO score? Are you aware of that? Uh, no, but I'm eight hundred plus. Okay. Yeah, do you know I had to put twenty five percent down? No, actually, I'm. Um, uh, I was trying to get an FHA loan, which is only required about 3% down. But have you gotten it yet? Have you gotten pre-qualified? Uh, actually, this Saturday we're going to go over there and talk to the um, to the agent. You mean a, a mortgage broker? Exactly. Right. And how much do you have to pay that person in fees? Do you even know? No. <sighs> we're not there yet. And you don't even know if you're going to be able to get a mortgage? Exactly. Right. I you, you know, know it's, it's it's all still in transit. You know, we're we're basically very interested in buying a house right now because the market is basically very low, and uh, we think it's a good investment. Mel, and uh, by the way, yes, buying houses that you're going to live in is rarely a good investment. At best, it's a forced savings play. I own okay. two houses. But the cost of ownership far exceeds the savings you would get by renting. Hmm. So it's better to rent an apartment at this point? I would say until you've got stellar credit uh -huh. and enough money to put a 20% down payment. And until you can afford to buy a place without people who you are not related to who have their own agendas and who may do their own thing. It's not a wise idea. You could end up in the hole for thousands of dollars. If the other two people bailed out on you, where would you be? Screwed. Uh, yeah. But, and mean, if you live with these people, I mean, you say they're your they friends. Have, have you ever lived with them? Actually, they live with me right now. They live with you right now? Yes. Okay. So you know what it's like to live with them? Yeah. We're, we're great friends. Um, they actually, I'm the one who actually brings more people over to the house than they do. Uh, they're more of a uh, homebodies and they don't like to, you know, do parties at the house, which I really like. That's why I don't, I don't mind living with them. Right. Uh, we all have our separate rooms and. It's very risky what you're proposing to do. I know it yeah. seems like it isn't risky, but it is. And if you find a mortgage at 3% down in the mortgage crisis we're in now, please call back and let everybody know where they can get that mortgage because nobody I know is getting 3% down mortgages these days. Really? Not, uh, have you heard of the FHA? Um, they're, they're yes, I, yes yeah. f the FHA is fairly well known. Yes, I've heard of the FHA. Uh, okay, um, they, they're doing this for like first-time home buyers. And uh, I've, I've already been um, coached on this by a few different people. But at the same time, it's like uh, I still haven't. We still haven't been pre-approved. You know, we haven't touched the 
our social security number. We don't want to do nothing until we are absolutely certain that we're and, and you with can't somebody. use your social security number anyway because you've got a lousy credit rating. Exactly, and so in, in that regard, you you know, you're saying that one of us. I mean, we're going to be screwed. I, so I they and let I me just, let's review. They have agreed to put your name on the deed, exactly. even though your name will not be on the obligation to pay. Exactly. Yes. I'll tell you, if I were their attorney, I'd say, you're nuts. <laughs> because well, cause you, you know, know what I mean, can happen? You know what can happen? Uh, yeah, I, I can bail out, but I would. No, you could not only bail out, you could then say, I want my third of the house. Well, yeah, we're, we're going to split it three ways. No, but we're you don't right. understand. Let's say you, because your financial situation is so lousy, uh -huh. let's say you just decide you can't pay the mortgage anymore. Okay. Okay. You could then claim you own one third of the house because your name's on the deed. Uh huh. So that could be great for you, but the people agreeing to do this are insane. Well, I would never do that. But <laughs> I would never do that. That's famous last words, son. I would never do that. No, I mean that's that that's screwing somebody over, and I'm not. I'm not in. Uh, I'm I'm not down with that. Okay. But I, I, all these people out there have a have a minimal understanding of investments, savings, the market, real estate market, stock market. People who say, oh, it's such a great investment to buy rather than renting. Mm -hmm. For a lot of people, renting is the best thing to do. Do you know what? I came to Los Angeles in 1988 making a six-figure income. Do you know what year I bought a house? Uh, I'm going to have to say 1996. Seven? 1997, that's right. I waited okay. nine years to buy a house. And the result is that I've owned this house now for 11 years. The result is that I could afford it. The result is that I, I have a low interest rate and low monthly payments because I, I planned and took my time and did it right. And I was not in a rush. And I rented during that time. And when I rented a house in the Hollywood Hills for $1,650, sure, I didn't get any of that money back. But my mortgage payment is, it was, was $3,600 a month, plus insurance, plus property taxes, plus earthquake insurance, plus maintenance, plus utilities for a larger space. I mean, the, the, the cost of ownership is so much more than renting. Um, some of that stuff is tax deductible, though. No, most of it is not tax deductible anymore. Some of it. Some no, of it. mortgage interest is tax deductible. Uh huh. What else? I have no idea. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's that's and the point is I mean, the fact the, that you the, have no idea is a bad sign. The, the the main reason that we're trying to do this is because um it. Is very low to buy a house. I mean, the house that we're trying to but buy. But it doesn't matter how low it is. It's dollars more two years ago. But the fact is, whatever the cost of the house, it's hundreds of thousand dollars more than you have. True. <laughs> but I mean, nobody ever buys a house having all the money to buy. If oh, I tell you that property. there's a Rolls Royce for a hundred thousand dollars off, would you go out and buy it? No. But you could save a hundred thousand dollars. Well, I can't afford a Rolls Royce. But that's my point. You have to look at a house like a Rolls Royce. It's something you can't afford. Hmm. I didn't own one for nine years after coming to L.A. Because I couldn't afford it. Sure, I could stretch it and I could get approved for the loan. and You know, I could cut back on Starbucks or whatever people say they're going to do. Well, the reality was I couldn't afford it and live in it and enjoy it. I, for one, am real glad I rented all those years. And you may regret that you didn't. Our email address is tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.